All right, y'all. Y'all have been to the College Football Hall of Fame. What you think, bro? Very, very informational. Uh, found out a lot about uh, small schools. Um, there's small schools that had a lot of history that we wasn't aware of. So we found out that we got here. Um, how things started as far as from the equipment to the, to the history of um, the evolution of football, uh, from the evolution of the weight, you know, and how, you know, back in the day, you know, the players were naturally small. I didn't realize that they had 170 pound linemen. Like, that's crazy. Uh, very informational. That, that blew my mind showing the evolution of size in the NFL. Well, I'm sorry, in just college. 180 pound linemen until now 200 and what is it 80 pound lineman right. average 286 college wise yeah it's, it's a lot you know um it's just it's just baffling you know of, of, and they tell you how like how naturally the, the human is just bigger um very informational very informational. did y'all enjoy yourselves yeah man yeah that was yeah it's a great little museum hit man over in atlanta because uh you got like Features for just about every uh, college team, uh, pretty much for like the FBS and FCS. You also got like small schools uh, included in there too, with D2 and D3. Um, they got the College Football Hall of Fame. You can pretty much look up any player that's been inducted to the College Football Hall of Fame, and they have the features for you know the ones that have been inducted like this year or the past two years, 2020 and 2021. And also with their little feature of the HBCU, so that's very good as well. I feel like you don't realize how many great players actually played at smaller schools. Yeah. Walter Payton, Jerry Rice, there's like a lot of uh, Steve Walter McNair. Payton, Jerry Rice, Steve McNair. Yeah, yeah a lot of you know, Ed, Ed Tutal Jones, Tennessee State. We have a few players from like South Carolina State, Nate Newton, Florida AM University. Uh, they've had a lot, you know. You got like, uh, you know, those from like NCAT too, you know, so Ter Terry Cohen from NCAT played for the Bears, right. you know, so they definitely have been having a lot of good players coming out of those HBCUs. Chris, you got a chance to see your uncle. Uh, your yeah, uncle was inducted into the uh, College Hall of Fame. What was that like? Yeah, I mean, it was, um, it was amazing just to see like his actual gear that he wore. Um, to see, you know, that they're recognizing my small town that I grew up in, Dangerfield, Texas, of about 2,000 people to see that they're actually um, have my city, you know, on the forefront of, of something here attached to the College Football Hall of Fame. I mean, that's, that's just a blessing. Um, and just, you know, to see, you know, more footage of him. You know, that they have footage of him playing that I've never even seen before um, on, on display. So, I mean, it was just an out-of-body experience, man. He was the first cornerback to win. He was the first winner of the the Jim Thorpe Award, right? Which is a legendary award in right. in, in, for, in college football. Right. So, what's that like? That he that they say he's the model in which all other applicants or participants is based on that award. Right. I think it uh, shows like you know no matter where you come from, as far as how big or small a background you come from, that with hard work. Um, perseverance and, and dedication to the game that you can go anywhere. I mean, that was, he was a kid from a little small town, uh, 2,000 you know, population town, and, and you know, four years from that, he ended up being, you know, the first, very first winner of the Jim Thorpe Award. I mean, it just shows them, it don't matter where you came from or what kind of uh, background you have is growing up, that, that you can be that guy, you know, you can be, you know, one of the best in the nation uh, with the hard work. But it all, you know, goes back to how much work you willing to put in. Thanks, fellas. Yep.